Hello and welcome to In the Studio at Davis Media Access. My name is Daisy and I will be your host for today's episode. We will be talking about pollinators native to Davis and how they affect local farms and cities. Today we have our two guests. Welcome to the show. We have Joanne Harity, project manager from the Yolo County Resource Conservation District and Diane Crumley. Um, Education and Outreach Coordinator for the North Davis Riparian Green Belt. So it's a mouthful. It definitely is. Thank you so much for being here. And let's start out with what makes local pollinators essential to our community? So local pollinators, especially in Yolo County, are really important because we lead the state in terms of agriculture. So pollinators are really critical to that pollination um, being successful in terms of um, they act as sort of like postal carriers for pollen and genetic material. It's important for um, when, a fl when any sort of crop is being grown in the field, they have these flowers and they need to provide I'm messing up already, sorry. <laughs> I'm well, sorry. <laughs> that, that's all right. Well, we have um, the vast majority of um, the food that we eat does need to be pollinated. And in our county, uh, some of our main crops, uh, vegetable, fruit, and nuts, and then also even um, alfalfa for dairy, um, are really important crops, both throughout California and, and locally. And they require pollination by both either honeybees or the less known native bees. Something like 75% of our crops are fruit, vegetable, and uh, crops require pollination from specifically from insects. So a lot of other crops can be pollinated via wind, mm -hmm. um, but these crops specifically in our county, the highest mm -hmm. egg producing crops are require bees to be pollinated. And which crops in Yolo County depend on bee pollination? So the biggest crops here are almonds, uh, tomatoes, sunflowers, all those sunflowers you see in Yolo County need to be pollinated by bees, and also things like squash and melons. Those are the main predominant crops that need to be pollinated by bees. And what is the difference between these native bees and you know, the classic honey bee? So there's probably three critical points in terms of what the difference is between those. The first is that the honeybee, what everyone's familiar with, is an introduced variety. It's not native, what would we consider indigenous to North America. It was introduced specifically for its um, pollinating capacity for crops. The second is that there's uh, the two different varieties. It's social versus solitary bees. A lot of the native bees are solitary in that they um, make their own nests by themselves and they go and forage for their food by themselves. Um, whereas uh, honeybees are very social. They have colonies, they uh, forage together, and then they um, create hives, what everyone kn knows as hives. And then the other main difference is that um, honeybees are generalists. So they don't have any, whatever is flowering, they're going to eat it up. Whereas a lot of the honeybees, or uh, the, sorry, the, uh, the natives. native bees, need specific food sources from specific plants. So a lot of times when we are um, developing hedgerows, and I don't know if anyone's familiar with a hedgerow, um, there's a specific graphic that I'm gonna point to right here. It's uh, what we do a lot at the RCD is create these uh, habitats on unused uh, portions of farm edges. And uh, what it does is create habitat for native bees, all kinds of animals, wildlife, and uh, uh, what we seek to plant throughout the year is habitat and plants that are going to flower year round. So they're going to provide nectar sources for these honeybees, for um, native bees year round. Uh, we want them to be, a lot of times native plants flower in the spring. We want them to have nectar sources even in the winter. And a lot of times these native bees meet, are, um, are looking for specific plants. So it's really important to have diverse, uh, diverse hedgerows that mm -hmm. have multiple different uh, plant species in them. Can we look into like the hedgerow design? Like what makes these unique from other types of hedgerows, um, specifically Yolo County's hedgerows? Yeah, so Yolo County's hedgerows are provide multiple what we call ecosystem services. So they provide a lot of different uh, 
benefits on farms. They uh, have natural enemies. They provide habitat for natural enemies that might attack crop, uh, crop pests. They are um, really good for erosion control sometimes. They uh, provide habitat in terms of uh, wood, uh, wood holes for native bees, ground, for ground nesting um, insects, and they're also biodiverse habitats. And so we, they're really these diverse uh, uh, landscapes that provide uh, habitat for birds, insects, mm -hmm. animals, all sorts of things. And one of the things that have been really well studied here in Yolo County is uh, farmers originally were kind of afraid to plant these because they were thinking, well, what if they also attract pests? So maybe they attract um, beneficial um, insects. So they've been extremely well studied and they, it's been determined that in, um, uh, in crops that have these rich native hedge, hedgerows that there are more beneficial insects and so they can use uh, less pesticides or be going completely organic because the beneficial insects will take care of the pests and then they have this great place to, to live and eat in the hedgerows, mm -hmm. and that there were more pests found in just the weedy areas mm -hmm. that if you just, you know, leave the ground alone and do nothing. So, mm -hmm. um, so that was just an, an extra added benefit. And then on top of it, when you have the native pollinators, they use a different form of pollination. Oftentimes it's caused this cause buzz pollination where they go into the flower deeply and they, they, um, they, they, they end up gathering more pollen and then they don't seem to travel in such a straight line the way most honeybees do. And so they kind of go all over the place. So they end up um, doing a better job of pollinating and so you get a higher yield. So there's more tomatoes, there's more melons if you wow. have um, these. So it's a it's a win-win a situation. There's a lot of research coming out of the Xerces Society that's showing that specifically in cherry tomatoes that native bees are better at pollinating the cherry tomatoes than honeybees. And so they do a better job of mm -hmm. activating uh, the flower. Um, and so what we're trying to do on farm edges is encourage all the edges to be this biodiverse habitat, to encourage mm -hmm. native, uh, native honeybee habitat. And then also there's um, new developmental research that shows um, there's pollinator strips that you can plant within farm edges, on farm edges, and cover crops that are specifically geared towards encouraging a lot more um, native habitat. Yes, and that's been um, done recently because so many of our uh, farmland in Yolo County has been being converted to orchards. Mm -hmm. So for example, walnut trees and, mm -hmm. and almonds and, then, and some fruit trees. So if you have a bunch of bare ground, on, uh, then that is you know, uh, bad for, uh, for erosion and just not biodiversity. So mm -hmm. they're developing um, studies, studying what types of um, what they call covered crops that then are in turn pollinated by native bees and honeybees um, that will both benefit the soil but then also mm -hmm. um, be a resource so uh, instead of um, renting your honeybees and having them shipped across the country to sit next to your orchard, mm -hmm. you're planting your own sort of food and habitat um, for bees and and so mm -hmm. they're so then they're living there and then that's you have the cost initially of doing the planting but you're not constantly renting and it costs three hundred dollars oh, wow. um, a um, you know a, a bee box mm -hmm. and so um, for for one acre and mm -hmm. so when we're talking hundreds and hundreds of acres it's actually a large cost um, in terms of renting the honeybees so if you create the habitat mm -hmm. then um, yeah, about it's this habitat, exactly. What, as a resident in the city, what can we do to help these bees? Let's say we're in the city mm -hmm. and we don't have these hedgerows. What can I do in a backyard? What can I do? Right. Well, the, the wonderful thing about living here in Davis is that we do have a lot of, of resources for um, 
uh, for gardening and for learning about gardening and for access to native plants. And one of the, uh, the largest resources, I would say, is the UC Davis Arboretum. It's 100 acres, which is incredible to begin with. Mm -hmm. and, but then they have a teaching nursery and are raising hundreds of different species mm -hmm. of plants. And twice a year, they have sales, and which one is coming up uh, September 29th. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you'll have another one October 13th and another one November 3rd. And this is a fantastic opportunity. Mm -hmm. It uh, it's, um, supports uh, the, this wonderful resource. And, mm -hmm. that, and I have, when I have gone and bought my first um, uh, sort of native plants, this was several years ago, I you know, mm -hmm. got them out of the car, put them in my backyard, sat down, mm -hmm. Before I could even have a sip of iced tea, I saw three native bee species that I had never seen before, ever. Wow. And they just, it was like, you know, literally plant it and they will come. Mm -hmm. Because this area has been a really rich, mm -hmm. uh, you know, prior to, there's only been agriculture here 150 years. So this was a huge prairie for thousands of years. And so there is the potential for a lot of of species of, of native bees that um, that we can provide for. So I would say um, the, the going to the arboretum, going to their plant sale, but then also on campus there is a small garden that's the um, uh, called the Hagen Das Honey Bee Haven, and that is located out in the west part of campus, mm -hmm. and it's in the middle of their research farms, and it's a half acre. And it has been beautifully designed. Uh, we have to really credit the Hagen uh, donated two hundred fifty thousand dollars to create this, and and uh, it's an uh, it's a free open garden year round, mm. and you can see uh, uh, very clearly what is working, what might work for your garden, um, and it was uh, designed for um, for for both public education and for research. They have open house days, one coming up this Saturday, where families can come out and, and um, learn all about uh, the native bees. Um, it's, they have uh, art projects out there, and um, it's, it's really a remarkable uh, place. They, they said it's, it's been there eight years, and when they first planted it, uh, within just a couple of months, they uh, they identified 40 native species, and now it's up to at least 80. So wow, that is incredible. We, um, for the viewers at home who mm -hmm. want to learn how to type of mimic these types of gardens, mm -hmm. um, the resources that we have. Yes, are as follows. Um, one of them is going to the uh, the UC Davis Arboretum uh, website. And that's the first one listed there, arboretum.ucdavis.edu. And also, if you, um, if you just Google gardening for pollinators, UC Davis Arboretum, they have a beautiful set of, of, of information there. The second one is beegarden.ucdavis.edu, and that will take you to the Honey Bee Haven website, which there are great resources. And then the, the final one that brings us back to what we were talking to at the, the beginning is uh, resources for pollinators on, on our local farms. And that's the NRCS California website for pollinators. And NRCS stands for National, um, yeah, Natural Resource Conservation Services. And they're a federal organization that is in every state. And we're lucky to have one here in Yolo County. And if yeah. you're also interested, you can always contact Yolo RCD, and we can point you to direction, like point you in the direction of uh, good pollinator habitat awesome. on farm and locally in in the city. And wow, they have wonderful resources on their website. Yeah, a really nice um, publications too. Great. Thank you so much for both being here for today's episode. Thank you for watching today's episode of In the Studio.